Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching WFTDA.com. I am Pelvis Costello. With me is the wonderful and talented Mike Checks. Good evening, sir. We have an amazing bout tonight. Indeed, we do. We've got the Philly Roller Girls taking on Naptown, and it has been an amazing day of action, as you just may have caught the recap right there. We have had some amazing bouts coming off the uh, Kansas City Rose City bout, and you and I get to close out the show tonight, sir. That's right, and what better bout than what we have is Naptown, their first time to the big dance in the Ascendancy, coming up against number two in the East, Philly, who has definitely had a proving year. Uh, what, we, what we've definitely seen with them coming into this, Mike Checks, of course, is that Naptown has actually played in sanctioned play against less than half of the folks that are competing this year. Yes, indeed, they have not had many bouts against uh, teams participating here at the championship tournament. Of course, they beat the fourth seed Detroit team to get into the championship bout here. Philly, however, has taken on all comers this season. That's right, we have watched Philly start all the way in Hungary for their inter-league bout action at the Wild West Showdown. Uh, coming up short against a Rose City and a Rat City, We're taking a win against Jet. And then starting to go up in that decline as they have been definitely what we'd say fighting to prove that they definitely deserve to be here. And they do. 11 to 8 in their actual season play so far. Naptown, 12 to 3. Yes, indeed. And the culmination of all of the work both of these two teams have put on this season, it will come to fruition this evening and all throughout this weekend at the championship tournament. For those of you watching, remember. Loser goes home in these brackets. And let's give you some of the roster information. Playing for Philly in the black and blue, number six, Castro, 15, Persephone, 22, El Biento, 29, Coppertop, 305, Shanita Stretcher, 527, Heavy Flow, 668, Olivia Face, 67, Dara Licks, 72, Gloria Grindum, number eight, Mo Payne, 81, Island You Scream, number 85, Teflon Donna, 87, Goldie, and 933, Ginger Vitus. And for the Naptown Tornado Sirens, hailing from Indianapolis, Indianapolis, Indiana, we've got a Moose Boosh, number 208, Anaslasia, number eight, Asian Sensation, 218, Blue Messiah, N3, Serial Killer, number two, number seven, Dora the Destroyer, six feet, and your grave. I'ma hurt you, zero, zero, zero. Katia looking 3-2-1. The spirit of 76 made in America. Majestic will be wearing number 105. Riptide is number four. Shady Lane is 317. And Willa Ho Flinch, number 318. Naptown decked out in their white uniforms with red trim. The Philly Roller Girls decked out in their black uniforms with blue trim, pelvis. This is going to be an amazing bout to cap it off for all of you watching at home. Don't forget, you can actually tweet at us, tell us exactly what you are thinking of the entire competition at pound talk to WFTDA. Well, Belvis, we've got all of our skaters in place, four blockers for each team, one jammer apiece, and that is the Spirit of 76 Made in America jamming for Naptown. Right, and looking up here, Persephone, number 15, is up there. She is jamming for Philly. Pack is immensely spread out to start this jam. Philly walling up in the back, making life difficult for Made in America on her initial pass. Persephone all the way up the front. They are letting her through. We're going to see if she gets lead jammer status. She does not. She did not pass everybody legally. No pass, no penalty. She is through on her initial pass and eligible to score points for Philly. Made in America still working on her initial pass. And Made in America makes it through, picks up lead jammer status and quickly calls off the jam. So now we are looking at Shanita Stretcher. She's number 305. She is up there for Philly in the black and blue. She's taking on N3, that's Blue Messiah. And with anything already starting, it looks like Blue Messiah kind of bringing it to Shanita, getting real close. Well, and again, all eight 
blockers up against that Dr. Hauschka jam line. And again, we're seeing another just scrum to start right in front of that line, although the uh, pack's starting to move now. The rugby, rugby scrum, very, very popular this entire season. Sheena Stretcher takes it down. She is down to a knee, had to be recycled to the back of the pack. Meanwhile, Blue Messiah having a lot of trouble there. 668, Olivia Face really giving it to her. Philly doing a great job setting up that back wall at the back of the track. Blue Messiah still trying to find an answer. And Shanita Stretcher answers that question with a lead jammer status for Philly. Pack stringing out now. Blue Messiah trying to take advantage. Goes to the outside of the front straightaway. Takes a spill in turn one. Great leap by Shanita Stretcher. She winds up getting a shirt assist from number 85, Teflon Donna. She's making her way up to that top of the pack. We're going to see if maybe that might split and let her through. And again, you see Philadelphia rolling their blockers to the back of the pack. Blue Messiah still having a difficult time making it through. Teflon Donna locked down defense for Philly. And Shanita Stretcher makes it through. Grand slam. One, two, three, four, five points for the Liberty Bells. El Viento pushing Blue Messiah to the inside of the far straightaway. Now she needs a stretcher up there. Naptown wall trying to slow her down. Philadelphia completely content to control the back of the pack. Blue Messiah just getting worked over this jam for Naptown. And that is another five point grand slam. Teflon Donna being sent to the CHE official penalty box. Blue Messiah is still fighting at the back of that pack. Already starting this off, we've got Philadelphia up there. 13 points, zero points, unanswered by Naptown. We want to make sure that you realize that outside of the lines, there is a new kind of t-shirt from Spenlin Media. You will look so fresh and so clean, clean, Mike Checks, in your Spenlin Media shirt. Well, I could definitely use one of those. Amuse Bouche, number 208, taking the jam cap for Naptown. Mo Payne, number eight, jamming for Philly. Mo Payne having a tremendous season this entire year. But there you go. You get your lead jammer for Naptown. Amuse Bouche making it through the pack. Very interesting as Naptown this time setting up a wall of blockers in the back of the pack. They control the back, and now they control lead jammer status, Pelvis. She who controls the pack controls the universe, Mike Checks. And now we're looking, Mo Payne still trying to get through that front white wall. She gets passed, we get a tap, so that is five points, a grand slam. If you're gonna put points on the board, what better way to do it than with the five finger special? Indeed, Amuse Bouge picking her spot right there, waiting and finding a hole on that inside rail, skated right through it as she's doing again right there on another scoring pass for Naptown. That is a four point pass for Amuse Bouge. Oh, Moose Boots, she's howling, howling at the moon. It must be just the, the lack of oxygen at one mile high that makes everybody just bring out the animal. And speaking of which, that is a trigger for excellence. Look for trigger in the crowd. Sign up free set of wheels. Don't forget, go also go to rollerscrollgates.com for the new deals all over the place. Riptide taking the jammer cap for Naptown. And there you go, that's, oh wow, Goldie now trying to get through that Naptown wall. It's a tough business, but Teflon Donna, number 85, gets out of the penalty box there to help out. Again, Naptown running four blockers to the back of the pack. Not nearly as successful as it was last jam for Moose Bush, but they are threatening right now. Up there in the front, just like that, over and over again, hammering, hammering, hammering away and recycling her right back into the center of that pack. Door to the Destroyer sent to the penalty box for Naptown. She's going to cool her wheels for a minute. And there you go. Goldie gets the lead. Jamma. Riptide fights through the pack, and she is out on her initial pass for Naptown. It was a very hard fight for Riptide through that. You're seeing right after the scores went on the board for Naptown, Philly definitely paying attention. And Goldie dancing around the pack in the front straightaway. Calls off the jam. Excellent footwork on display by Goldie there. 
This game may come to a photo finish, and what I want you to do is check out No Mercy, the new Derby photo book from Jules, Axel Adams Doyle. You can get that online. You can get it any time you go to a tournament. It is worth it. It is beautiful. It is from Axel Adams. Philadelphia out to an early 17-9 lead against Naptown. And we have an official timeout. Well, and speaking of official pelvis, Adam Wheels is the official wheel of the WFTDA. That's Adam Wheels. Now, one of the things that you've been saying lately is this pre-jam rugby scrum, which, of course, they're just tightening up as much as they can, making a no-back situation. But then, as the jammers come through, they have to try to rip through an almost solid wall, which is what we just saw happen. Willa Hoflinch taking advantage of the outside that was unguarded by the Philly Liberty Bells. She pops through quickly, picks up lead jammer status. Well, you squeeze in too tight and you make a diamond. And a diamond, while precious, is a lot very, very small. So you can pass it if you get on the outside. And that is exactly what she did, already attacking the back of the pack on her scoring pass. Gets pushed to the outside at turn three. It calls off the jam after picking up two points for Naptown. That's right, you saw the uh, double horns by the jammer for that two points. We also want to give a big shout out to Five on Five Magazine who had great coverage of everything leading up to this tournament. They are the official magazine of the WFTDA. You can go to fiveonfivemag.com, get yourself a subscription. Maiden America returns to the jam line for Naptown. That's right, she's taking on Goldie who is back and doing it again like KMFDM. Goldie already getting through on that, gets lead jammer even before she's all the way through turn one. Made in America coming up against that wall of Philadelphia blockers. Pops through coming into turn three. She is free on her initial pass. Goldie already coming up right to the back. She has her sisters in black and blue flanking her. Numbers advantage favoring Philadelphia right now. Two blockers out on the track for Naptown, three for Philly. She got a good assist with a booty push there, Mike Checks. Now she's going up to close. Door the Destroyer calls it off. Get three points, that's what you need. I also want to give a big shout out to Blood and Thunder. Not only are they doing all that great stuff with the World Cup, issue number 18, out now, folks. Philly Roller Girls going to start again with a four to two blocker advantage. Only two blockers for Naptown out on the track right now. All four of the Philly blockers took a knee, basically making a reverse class photo being the back wall. Blue Messiah displaying some excellent footwork, almost gets pushed off the Dr. Hauschka jam line, but instead recovers quickly. She is not out first, but she is hot on the wheels of... And we've got that lead jammer there for Philly. Gloria Grindham calls off the jam. Two points picked up before for her efforts. Gloria Grindham has always been a really great player. And seeing her right here up there, this is one of those folks that you know, a solid vet who definitely shows that her team deserves to be here. We've got it all, all up there, the empty CHE penalty box. Moose Boost out there, number 208 for Naptown. Shanita Stretcher, number 305 for Philly. We're doing Derby's version of the truffle shuffle as a Moose Boost tries to find her way through that back wall of Philadelphia blockers. And there we go. Shanita Stretcher coming in on the outside. Shanita's already got 12 points to her credit this evening. Gonna look to add some more. She has declared lead jammer. She needs to stretch her, also a member of Team USA, gonna be playing at the World Cup. Amuz Bouge pushes her way through, comes out of turn four. She is clear on her initial pass for Naptown, but it's Shanita Stretcher, the lead jammer, looking to attack the back of the pack for Philly. Naptown blockers doing a great job of pushing the pace of the pack. Yeah, Naptown definitely just holding on to the speed of that pack right now. Oh, we're seeing some wrecking balls coming in there. 
you are watching just right there, number 22. My dear pal, El Viento, she is just trying to get some room for her jammer. Amuz Bush comes up on that back wall of Philly blockers trying to pick off a point, and Teflon Donna delivers a huge hit to her right as the jam is called. We want to get it. Don't forget, Dr. Hauschka celebrates the fresh faces of the WFTDAs. Don't forget to check out drhauschka.com, the official bruise healer. Lose the bruise with Dr. Hauschka's ouchade. Mo Payne wearing the jammer cap for Philly. And that is number four, Riptide, with the jammer cap for Naptown. Mo Payne battling to the inside, dances now to the outside. When she moves, they move, just like that. Again, Philly controlling the back of the pack. Riptide having a hard time with the three blockers back there holding her back. Number 527 heavy flow of Philly is just so great at pulling away folks from the Naptown wall and just isolating them. Oh, she was absolutely amazing to watch at the East Regional Tournament. And there you go, lead jammer, Mo Bang. Riptide still fighting against that back wall for Philly. Pelvis, we've seen it. If they're able to control the back wall, they're able to control the, the jam. Whoa. Great knocks again. She makes that great work. She's right there on the outside. One, two, three, four, five points for Philly. Mopane going around the outside, coming out of turn two on the far straightaway, already looking to attack again for Philly, trying to run up her point total. Well, in her very name, it's Mo. Mo pain. Exactly. Mo points, Mo problems for Naptown. And Mo pain just continues to push, and she is through once again for another five point grand slam. Wow! She is a power jam wizard. Riptide through for four point, or excuse me, through on her initial pass. Just check out the rear of the print. She calls it off, Mo Payne, after being knocked out, gets two more points in that pass. Right now, you're looking at that score, 11, Naptown, 37, the Philly Roller Girls. Philly starting to establish themselves right now. We still have 16 and a half, a little more than 16 and a half minutes of play here in this first half. One thing that I know is that so many of the players out there right now are wearing Rydell skates. Rydell skates, proud partner and official skate of the WFTDA. Teflon Donna lining up on the jam line for Philly. That's right. And now you're seeing number 318 for Naptown. That's Willa Hoflinch. And again, Philly moving their blockers to the back. Willa Hoflinch having a hard time getting through. Teflon Donna coming up around turn three. She gets lead jammer. Willa Hoflit. Yeah, she is starting to gain on Teflon Donna as they're getting closer to that pack. Teflon Donna hops in right on the back, calls it off real quick, gets a one point in her jam. Well, you take whatever points you can get, and she was happy to have those. You pay your, you pay your money for dues, and you takes your chances. Antique boots, reckless wheels, and moto bearings. Revolutionizing roller derby. That is Green Mount Monster Roller Sports. We've got Gloria Grindham jamming for Philly. Made in America jamming for Naptown. Philly with that 38 to 11 lead. Grindham already getting really close up. You're seeing that reverse blocking. Looks like a fourth minor. Sending someone to the box, and right now, boom, lead jammer, Gloria Grindham. Made in America out on her initial pass, giving up about a half track right now. You notice that pack? Pretty open as she was coming in, but when she got knocked to the outside, it tightened up so quick. Made in America couldn't quite make it to the back of the pack to pick up any points. Two more points for Philadelphia as they continue to extend their lead. I want to give more love. To, to a business that I know has the best customer service in the business, period, and that is Derby Supply. Derby Supply, you heard what I said, the best customer service, period. Well, Pelvis, Philadelphia right now with a 29-point lead as we are just under 15 minutes left to play here in the first half. It has definitely been a battle for the back of the pack, and... 
Speaking of a battle, there you see Teflon Donna in the replay fighting just to get around. She's doing phenomenal work. She is a great blocker and an incredibly fast and formidable jammer. Yes, indeed, and she is not afraid to use every weapon in her arsenal as far as her skating abilities are concerned. Somebody who is absolutely electric to watch out on the track. Stripe or star, Teflon Donna's got the sauce. Looks like we're getting ready to start up again. Number 208, a moose boosh on the line for Naptown. Goldie jamming once again for Philadelphia. And check it out, Naptown is actually going and saying hello to the pivot line. Almost unheard of in the entire championship tournament so far. Well, specifically so far in this bout, let's see if it pays off for them. Philly content with that back wall once again. Amuz Bouch fighting her way against that. Dora the Destroyer returning to the penalty box for Naptown. Goldie just, she's getting pushed back right into that pack. You are watching, it seems like an, an accordion. Oh! Amuz Bouch knocked to the inside. That's eight. Sorry, excuse me, that was Asian, Asian Sensation doing a great job of holding her back before she got out and picked up lead jammer status. Goldie now making her way into that pack. You see her right now, Asian sensation, very aware of where she's going. But right on the outside, whip assist. One, two, three, four, five. That is a grand slam for Philly, bringing them up to 45. Amuz Bush pushed outside of turn four and now pushed to the inside of turn one. She is getting pinballed in that pack. You watching at home, you could see it as Goldie was coming around that line. She is looking. She is well aware of who from the opposing team even knew where she was, and she went accordingly, and it paid off. And there goes Amuz Boo. She is clear now on her initial pass for Naptown. Heavy flow holding down the front, clearing away for Goldie. Goldie knew and Moose Bush was coming up on the pack, had her four points and called the jam for Philly. Hex Chromosome is high attitude, high performance, athletic apparel for the battle ready skater. Check them out, Hex Chromosome. Persephone taking the jam cap for Philly. Blue Messiah returns to the jam line for Naptown. And pelvis, it doesn't look like uh, doesn't look like starting on the pivot line was uh, was something we're going to continue to do. Well, I mean, there's always some the learning curve is slow. I mean, right now Twitter is lagging, but you know, keep your tags coming. Just keep tweeting. Just keep doing it. We want to know what you think. I have faith that everybody will get it all figured out. Persephone trying to push away against the front of the pack. She is through, and she's your lead jammer for Philly. Persephone definitely just pouring it on the pain. And Blue Messiah makes her way through that pack. Meanwhile, Persephone getting knocked around, and oh, it looks like we've got a toe stop bouncing over to the crowd. And that is four points for Philly. I know you're entertained at home. I really hope that you're entertained if you're watching in Australia right now, because you deserve it. You you're watching Derby, international, and we love you. Made in America returns to the jam line for Naptown. And Shanita Stretcher. Shanita Stretcher may have started up behind her, but they are now both in there. But oh, Made in America, boom. Made in America popping through the pack, picking up lead jammer status. Right now you have seen most of the lead jammer statuses in this period going to Philly. So Made in America trying to make up those points while Shanita Stretcher is still about half a track behind the pack. Shanita has made up good time on that and look at that, Shanita pops through, crosses the apex and picks up four points for Philly. Shanita Stretcher seems to have an earpiece in and is listening to the HQ feed because anytime I try to say something against her, she does a one quick jump juke and there she is. She ate up the distance she had given up quickly and already threw attacking again on another scoring pass. 
She originally put out three fingers, and the ref put out four, and she didn't correct him. It's like, it's like when the uh, officer gives you a moving violation verbal warning. You're like, yeah, all right. That's cool. Totally went through that red, but it's all good. Bo Payne taking the jam cap for Philadelphia. Amuz Bouche with the jam cap for Naptown. We also want to show Philadelphia. Philadelphia starting it up, as you were saying. So right now, lead jammer for Philly is Mo Payne. Philadelphia blocker cycling up front, and it is now hold it still holding back a Moose Bush, a Moose Bush being being held back again. Philadelphia's amazing defense. And Philadelphia just really trying to keep it. Let's see. A Moose Bush now through on her initial pass. Mo Payne calling it off. All right, now we're coming up. The number 14, 270, the Philadelphia Roller Girls ahead. We got Riptide out there, number four for Naptown. Number 87, Goldie. And now we are seeing Enya Grave, six feet. She is the pivot. You are seeing the this from the other direction. And look at that, Enya Grave trying to slow her down. And it works, she falls down. And Riptide out in front, she gets lead jammer for Naptown. Olivia Face headed to the penalty box for Philly. She's gonna go cool her wheels for a minute. That puts two Philadelphia blockers in the penalty box, Naptown with one. Riptide now sliding her way past Teflon Donna. She calls it off. Naptown coming alive like Peter Frampton, four points. Riptide with some amazing footwork there, picking up those points for Naptown. Excellent job. Don't forget, you can take your league to the next level with Skate Court Roller Derby Flat Tracks. Three to two pack advantage for Naptown to start this jam. Gloria Grindham, she's going to be a jamming for Philly, number 72. Willa Ho Flinch taking the cap for Naptown. And it's Gloria Grindham fighting at the front of the pack. She is through and she is your lead jammer for Philly. She needs a stretcher wearing the pivot, and she's shoving into the jammer. Gloria Grindham in the middle of attack in the pack, dances to the outside, cuts back to the inside. Naptown with their three blockers up front, doing a great job holding it back. Number 67, Dara Licks sweeping through that pack, trying to open it up. You see them right there, Gloria Grindham, Dara Licks discussing that jam as it went down. Well, Pelvis, maybe it is possible they are discussing Five on Five magazine, the official magazine of the WFTDA. You can check them out at fiveonfivemag.com. Made in America is out there for Naptown. Goldie for Philly. We're starting it up again. A slower pack coming off that first turn, going into turn two. Naptown cycling their blockers to the pack, and that allows Made in America to pop through the pack, picking up lead jammer status for Naptown. Goldie now through Teflon Donna Castro. Goldie did a great job of pushing the blockers for Naptown out of play. Made in America getting pushed to the outside of the front straightaway. Gets her two points, but has to call off the jam. That's bringing Naptown up to 20. We're talking about a 51-point lead with Philly so far. Six minutes on the clock. The first period you are watching us on WFTDA.com. Don't forget, folks, a lot happened today, and you can actually see it all. You don't have to go to bed. Just upgrade to the HQ feed. You can just do that right there on the access. Log in, give them a credit card. You can watch this all these wonderful bouts for 90 days. 
Amuz Bush jamming it once again for Naptown. And she rolls onto the inside rail, picks up Lee Jammer status. It was a complete stealth move, and it is appreciated. The crowd definitely going wild on that. Persephone through. Persephone giving up about a third track right now to Amuz Bush, who's looking to attack the back of the pack on her scoring pass. She's calling that off. Zero, zero, two eggs, make yourself an omelet. Fists in the air for ref solidarity, no score. If you want to talk about solidarity, the Five Stride Skate Shop is there. It is the preferred shop of Bonnie Thunders, Deranged, Psycho Babble, Susie Hot Rod, and Teflon Donna. That is multiple teams, folks, all shopping at the same store. Why don't you? Philadelphia are going to start this jam with a 4-2 to two blocker advantage. Riptide jamming once again for Naptown. The two blockers up there, you've got Dora the Destroyer and Asian Sensation up against a full Philadelphia Liberty Bells. Asian Sensation, bam, knocking her to the outside. Goldie having to come back in. Goldie looking to attack the pack, rolling to the outside through turn four. And she is clear on her initial pass. However, she is not the lead jammer. Did not pass all of the skaters legally. Now Teflon and Donna, captain of the Liberty Bells, trying to slow stuff down, but Riptide gets through. Smart move, calling it off right away. When you've got the Philadelphia jammer already creeping up on the back of the pack, you just can't waste any time. I want to also talk about why we shouldn't waste time, Mike Checks. It's important because you always want to make sure that you get the right stuff. And what could be better for your bruisers than Dr. Hauschka's Ouch Aid? That's right, it's the WFTDA's official bruise healer. Lose that bruise. Well, Dr. Hauschka sponsoring our jam line this evening, and that is where you will find Made in America and Mo Payne jamming for their respective teams this jam. Check this out. We are seeing crazy action at the front of that pack. The pack's starting to split up a bit. Mo Payne through. She gets lead jammer for the Liberty Bells. Mo Payne able to push the Naptown blockers out past 20 feet. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia blockers were holding back Made in America, but she is clear on her initial pass. Whoa. I am amazed. You saw Ima Hurt you actually trying to break up that back wall from Philly and doing a damn good job of it. Starting up this jam again. We've got Shanita Stretcher out there, number 305 for Philly. And that's Majestic with the jam cap for Naptown. Shanita Stretcher, 27 points to her credit so far this evening. Now, one of the things that you might have noticed out there, Mike Checks, is that m everybody on the team of Naptown, they've got strawberries painted on each other, right on their faces, and that's, they're on that cheek. That's a salute to the founder, Strawberry Jam, who's watching on WFTDA.com. Just a way of saying hi back home. And some amazing action on the track right there. That is Shanita Stretcher, Azure Lead Jammer Majestic, though, hot on her wheels. She just stretch her definitely looking like she doesn't mind though, going for some great defensive jammer on jammer action. Dragging her pretty much back into that pack. Holy cow, Majestic, the recipient of a huge hit by Ginger Vitus there in turn four. Ginger Vitus, a serious concern. Now here we go. Coming right back in. She just stretch her on her scoring pass. Shanita Stretcher, great lateral game, inside to outside to inside. Naptown with that three wall up front, trying to hold her back. They're trying to hammer her, but she gets through, and that is one, two, three, four, five points. Majestic now battling against the back of the pack. That Philadelphia defense absolutely suffocating, Pelvis. Naptown definitely knows how to just push in on their opponents, trying to just slow them down. Oh, going for the hit, Shanita Stretcher stays in. Blue Messiah was really trying to give it to her. 
And Shanita Stretcher through for another five point grand slam for Philadelphia. That's bringing Philly up to 85 so far. Naptown 20. Majestic now through the pack on her initial pass. Shanita Stretcher attacking the pack once again. Shanita Stretcher calls off the jam, but not before putting four more points on Philly's side of the scoreboard, Pelvis. Absolutely amazing, Mike Checks. Philly has definitely been taking a lot of criticism, both on the online community and for some folks that just get so shady at the after parties and, and, and tournaments. And, and from what we could tell right now, watching Philly versus Naptown, the game... It, we were watching Lisa Phillips. She's actually tweeting. She says, watching Philly versus Naptown game on the iPhone from 30,000 feet in the air on my way to Denver. She's saying that the stream and the announcing is great. And Mike Checks and I agree. Pelvis, I think that is about the biggest for the win we could possibly have this weekend. If you are flying to Denver and you are watching the action, my hat's off to you. Yeah. If, if one thing that people have noticed while they've been, while they've been watching is that we have had a lot of amazing coverage, not even during the action, but for introspective interviews and whatnot. As a matter of fact, Chip Queso is going to have an interview with Coach Lobster of Rose City right after the ad reel, so stick around. Gloria Grinder wearing the jam cap for Philly. Amuz Bush returning to the Dr. Hauschka jam line for Naptown. And Pelvis, as we've seen time and time again, Philly taking the back and just punishing the Naptown Jammers. That's right, Philly got back, and there you're seeing number 72, Gloria Grindham getting lead jammer status. And Gloria Grindham making quick work of that track as she's all ready to engage on her scoring pass, but Amuse Bush doing a great job, a little bit of jammer defense there at the back of the pack as Amuse still working on her initial pass. Well, at that point, you know, that moves Booch definitely aware, but now she gets sent away. We get a power jam right now. Definitely not what they should be looking for. Naptown now get suffering. They get a five. You're seeing Philly get a five point grand slam on that one. Gloria, Gloria Grindham just going to look to add to her totals this jam as she's attacking the pack on her second scoring pass. She is through. And that's another five point grand slam. Just stealing them. Just stealing them like grandma's cookies off the windowsill. Gloria looks like she's happy to grind as many points onto the scoreboard as she possibly can for Philly going into the half. Yeah, we are definitely, we are out on the, on the actual period clock, but five more points, and that is it. My, oh, my, Gloria with one more grand slam before she calls it off. And Pelvis, it looks like we're ready to head into halftime. That's right. Right now you're looking at Naptown Roller Girls 20, Philadelphia Roller Girls 104. Mike checks. We are seeing some amazing derby action throughout this. Of course, the winner of this game, they are going to be going on tomorrow. We are back. You are watching WFTDA.com. I am Pelvis Costello. I am joined with Mike checks. Howdy, sir. Thank you very much. I am so excited. What an amazing display from Philadelphia Liberty Bells. Definitely showing that they are in it to win it. Getting ready to fit. They, right now, if you want to go at this period one, 104 to 20, I think it's safe to say that if we were just going in just incremental, they, this period was definitely Philly. Well, indeed, and the numbers show that. Shanita Stretcher having picked up 41 points in the first half alone, and she is not the only jammer for Philadelphia who scored more than 20 points. We've got Goldie with 21 points, Gloria Grindup with 20 points, and Mo Payne with 20 points. Now for Naptown, their leading scorer, Amuz Bush, number 208. She has picked up 12 points, and that has been augmented by four points from Riptide. And a couple other jammers with two points apiece, Willa Hoflinch and Made in America. Both these two teams were definitely coming into this really out to prove something. Nat Town, of course, this is their big thing, the new dance. They are a new, relatively new bout. Sorry, they're a relatively new team coming in, getting ready to prove themselves. They have done so quite well. Indeed, and 
you know, yes, 84 points is a fairly sizable difference at halftime, but Naptown can take a few things away from this bout, and one of those things is how cleanly they've managed to play in the first half. Serial Killer and I'm a Hurt You are they're the only two skaters that have three trips to the box in the first half. That's amazingly clean play. Philadelphia also very clean play. Olivia Face, three trips to the box in the first half. Uh, and a handful of skaters with one trip apiece for Philly. Listen to you talking about clean play. Clean play is definitely a big thing, but the Asian sensation has been a hellion on wheels, the way that she has been able to actually block and harass Philadelphia this whole time. It's been really, really amazing to see. You need to see this. If you didn't see period one, you're cray cray. You need to get the HQ upgrade and you should go right there, go to WFTDA.com, upgrade your status, watch this game again, listen to me, you'll giggle, you'll learn, and don't forget, you can actually keep tweeting us, go pound, talk to WFTDA.com. By the way, hello, Anna Warren, Sydney. I love you. The referee's going through the last bit of equipment checks as we get ready for this second half of play. I am a fan of couture, so whenever I see uh, them che checking the entire ensemble, I get excited, but not as excited as I am right now for period two. Gloria Grindham taking to the jam line for Philly. She's in a power jam. That's a heck of a way to start the second half of play, Pelvis. Or at least the penalty is just accruing and being reviewed by the referees in between on the halftime. So now we've got Gloria Grindham up there, and oh my goodness, did Jambi get my wish at Pee Wee's Playhouse? Blockers on the pivot line? What has happened? Mecca like a high Mecca Chani Ho. Mo Payne purposefully taking her fourth minor penalty. Maybe perhaps we will see her jam in the near future. Check it out, Gloria Grindham up there. She has to be let go. She is the LJ, the lead jammer. Amuz Bouche returning to action, getting ready to attack the back of the pack. Probably very thankful not to be coming up against a back wall of Philly blockers, and she makes her way through quickly on her initial pass. Her speeds and your rhymes, you assassins, y'all. And there you go, Gloria Grindham, she's through. She gets four points. She's checking out Amuz Bouche from across the way, seeing if she's getting close enough. Definitely doing a calculating risk. Coach Williams on the bench just yelling at his team. Amuz Bouche looking for points. Asks for one, gets three. Congratulations, Amuz Bouche. Christmas comes early. The referee is calling such a great game. Sugar Daddy and his crew should really be commended for this play so far. Made in America returning to the jam line for Naptown. You've got Shanita Stretcher once again up there. Shanita Stretcher is actually starting behind Made in America. Kind of using Made in America as a screen to start that jam. Started to dart out to the outside and then cut back to the inside. It's an interesting strategy using the opposing team's jammer as a shield as you're traveling through. And now there, Made in America, she gets lead jammer status. Well, that's the thing about this sport being still in its infancy pelvis is there is something to learn every year. Every year at championships, somebody does something where other teams are like, you know what, that's amazing, we're gonna do that. You wanna talk about amazing? That's a five point grand slam right there for Naptown. Na Naptown getting their groove back. Made in America coming out in this jam, five points on the board already, attacking the pack on a scoring pass once again. Naptown coming out of halftime on fire. Looks like she collided there with Teflon Donna. Teflon Donna went down, not a major back block, however. So Teflon Donna just decided, okay, fine, let me sweep a little bit for you. No, she stays in five more points. That is a 10 point Grand Slam so far for Naptown. Gee whiz. Made in America now coming up against that four wall of Philadelphia block is to the back of the pack, something that has been giving Naptown jammers fits all bout long, but coming out of halftime, apparently not so big a problem. Made in America gonna drop five more in their side of the scoreboard. If you notice, she calls it off, 15 points right now in that jam. She is cheering to the fans. Shanita Stretcher in the penalty box just stands up. She looks at her and just 
taps those hips and is like, no, I just can't let you in. Can't do it. Made in America trying to ice the jammer, Shanita Stretcher, and give her team a power jam to start this next jam with Riptide wearing the star for Naptown. And now you're watching them once again getting close to the Dr. Hauschka jam line. Riptide off the line quickly. Philadelphia blockers swarming on that front line. And there you go, Shanita Stretcher. She gets the lead jammer right there past turn two. I don't know whether or not we can say that the plan backfired for Naptown, but uh, Philadelphia definitely willing to cash in on that situation. Yeah, ooh, heavy flow. Taken down Riptide on that one. Riptide a little slow to recover, back up on her skate, skating through the second straightaway. At you're right, right there, and then you get the five points there by Shanita Stretcher. Pack bunched up in the front straightaway. Shanita Stretcher already making quick work of the track and attacking the pack once again. Riptide still fighting against all four Philly blockers that have cycled to the front of the pack. Philly is having so much fun in the back, they decided a change of pace and perspective, taking up the front this time and holding Riptide back amazingly almost for an entire lap right there in the front. Shanita battling, almost gets knocked out of turn four, stays on her skates, Riptide almost suffering the same fate at the hands of Persephone. Persephone, some great positional blocking at the back of the pack, Riptide still fighting. And Shanita Stretcher is still trying to get through, but two scoops of serial killer holding her back. Riptide still fighting against that back two wall for Philadelphia. Philadelphia doing a great job stretching out the pack, bridging to keep that two wall as far back as possible. You're seeing that, both Derelicts and Persephone just harassing Riptide through that pack, and we get five more points for Shanita Stretcher. If you notice, this jam going a little bit slower, but Shanita Stretcher is still able to capitalize. She's just taking her time to get through. And Riptide, after all of that fighting, being sent to the penalty box for a track cut. Oh, heartbreaking for Naptown. And it looks like right at the end of that, Shanita Stretcher also being sent to the box. Both jammers going in right as we're setting up again. Both of them still sitting. That was a back block major penalty for Shanita Stretcher right at the end of that jam. Well, the funny thing about this, Pelvis, is uh, we managed to still start a jam without a jammer. Oh, Riptide starts whipping the jammer panty over the pack, trying to get it to the pivot. The star pass, let's see, has it been completed? And there you go, Philly, number 87, Goldie, she is through. On your grave, the recipient of that cap pass, she does have the star on her head now, gets pushed outside of turn one. I don't know if you noticed, but it is a double star pass, like a double rainbow, so beautiful. Everybody is switching sides, it is amazing. I'm sorry, I'm just over here tripping out on this whole thing. And that is four points for Philly. Anya Grave attacking the back of the pack for Naptown. Pelvis, we're going the full two minutes here. Well, you have to. When you have both both teams have done a star pass, which means no one can get lead jammer, which means it is just all scoring time. Four more points for Philly. Pack a little slow right now. We are seeing the points add up, more specifically on Philly's side of the scoreboard right now. Anya Grave having a hard time with that back wall. Philadelphia blockers, as they have been all night long. That neutralization gets her a five-point grand slam. Goldie definitely bringing that points. And she's through again. Let's see how many she gets. One, two, three, four, five points. Two grand slams in a row. No way to stop this except for the jammer clock to run down. Teflon, Donna, Shanita Stretcher, and Olivia Face doing a great job, an absolutely great job of lockdown defense for Philly at the back of the pack. That is, that is just devastating. And five more points, another grand slam. 
in a jam where pivots become jammers. You, the viewer, are the winner. Don't forget, the winner of this bout is going to be facing the Oli Rollers tomorrow at Saturday, 2.45 Mountain Time. Mo Payne on the line with the jammer cap for Philly. Looks like she is in a power jam. Anya Grave being sent to the penalty box at the end of that last jam. And there you go, quick lead jammer status. Look at her go. Pack getting strung out. Mo Payne still pressing against the front of that pack. She gets through, and that is a five point grand slam. Philly. Philly just continuing the trend of the jam before it. And Mo Payne coming through. Bring in Mo Payne again. Another five points for Philly. Philly just continues adding to their lead as Naptown came out of halftime on fire. Philadelphia, though, has stolen the thunder. Another five points. Crack a boom. Naptown with their three blockers in the front. Philly, their three blockers in the back. Mo Payne gets pushed to the outside of turn. Three, picks up three points and calls off the jam. Turn three, three points, that works. Well, Pelvis, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Protec Dent Mouth Guards, Derbalife, and Derby Skins, all proud event, event sponsor partners of the 2011 WFTDA Championship Tournament. Definitely, we would be nowhere without those sponsors. They are absolutely fantastic. I stand by their products, and I know almost everyone competing here does too. Right now, Goldie having a bit of trouble getting past Serial Killer. Well, Pelvis, this bout has taught us one thing, and that's she who controls the back of the pack controls the pack. And look at that. Amuse Boosh, your lead jammer for Naptown. Mm-hmm. Amuse Boosh getting all the way through. Goldie's still not through the pack. Naptown definitely taking their measure of the situation and looking to capitalize. Amuse Bush finding a small window on the inside of turn two, rolls through the far straightaway on her way to a grand slam for Naptown. If you notice through that five points, Goldie was actually following her for a little bit through that pack and actually getting some progress. Now Asian Sensation helping slow her down with Dora the Destroyer. Well, Asian Sensation and Dora did a great job closing the door on Goldie before she could get through on the wheels on the heels of Amuse Boosh, so to speak. Amuse Boosh adds four more points to the total for this jam and calls it off for Naptown. That's right, Philadelphia currently at 159, Naptown at 50. Don't forget, there is also following event partners that we also love, TICSkateGear.com, Union Vacations, Derbyology, and Fast Girl Skates. They have all helped bring you some of this amazing action that you are witnessing. Persephone purposefully taking her fourth minor. She's headed to the penalty box. Blue Messiah jamming for Naptown. And it looks like Teflon Donna now skating her way in. Her time is up and now she rejoins the pack just in time to take a knee. Gloria Grindham wearing the star once again for Philadelphia. Gloria Grindham having a very, very good game. And she gets lead jammer status right now. Gloria Grindham coming into this jam with 24 points. Going to look to add to that total right now and take advantage of the 3-2 to two blocker situation that Philly has. Yep, Philly definitely. Oh, he's talking about advantage. Teflon Donna just bowling over a moose boosh Blue Messiah still trying to attack the back of the pack for Naptown. Meanwhile, Grand Slam. Philadelphia. Now we're looking right here. Boom. Gloria Grindham knocked out. She calls it off, but does she do it in time? Yes, she does. Zeros on that pass. Want to give you 
another love to Elemental Technologies. That's right, I'm giving you a love tap, Elemental Technologies. You are the world's most powerful video processing solutions. And from Love Tap, we go to Mo Payne jamming once again for Philly Amuse Bouche opposite her on the Dr. Hauschka jam line. That is one of the most popular places on the entire track, Pelvis, is that Dr. Hauschka jam line. And wow, what a great starting point. Mo Payne literally just walked over everybody and went through to get lead jammer status. It's almost like they weren't even aware as she pulled her way through that. Now she's coming in, she's looking to score. Like a scene out of Taxi, I'm walking here. Mo Payne still attacking the front of the pack for Philly. She's through on a scoring pass, and that's a grand slam. Grand slam after grand slam. Moose Bush through that pack. Keep in mind, Mo Payne working through the pack on her second scoring pass. Moose Bush just clear of her initial looking to engage on that first scoring pass for Naptown. That's right, and the two blockers out there, of course, we've got Copper Top and Ginger Vitus. Both of them just trying to hold it down long enough to get Mo Payne through that pack. Well, it's amazing the amount of skating that has gone on in this bout that these ladies are still able to deliver these humongous hits. Mo Payne through the pack one more time. Grand Slam Philly. Well, it looks like he... Oh, four, it's only four. Four points is good. They'll take four points. And now we're looking. It's through again. She's coming through again, Mo Payne. Looking to score just a few more points in this jam. Naptown back at full strength right now. It looks like Philly may be trying to even that out as well. Just going to continue pushing the pace of the jam. See if they can empty out that penalty box. Well, it's a little bit like Thunderdome. Two ladies enter, one lady leaves. But now in this case, it's Gingivitis leaving to go to the CHE penalty box. She's in there. She's cheering her team along. And that is four points for Amuz Bush. This pack is at a breakneck speed right now. Amuz Bush. Four points for Naptown. That was an amazing jam there, Pelvis. It was. Just as amazing. Again, I want to mention them just for a second time. Out of love, Elemental Technologies, they are the world's most powerful video processing solutions. And, of course, you see those skates out there, Mike Checks? I do indeed, Those are Rydell skates. You can read them as Asian Sensation is taking a knee. They are a partner of the WFTDA and the official skate of WFTDA. And we are proud to have them. Persephone with the jam cap for Philly. Made in America once again jamming for Naptown. Look at Persephone just looking for a way through. Asian Sensation headed to the penalty box for Naptown. And it's made in America, picking up lead jammer status for Naptown, coming out of the second straightaway. Majestic trying to hold back Persephone, but Persephone threw now on her initial pass. This is definitely what you're seeing here. Made in America showing, you know what? Naptown is here. We definitely earned our spot. We are going to fight this all the way through. It may be 13 minutes on the clock. It don't matter. 54 to 175. We've seen bigger canyonist scores before. Indeed we have. And Pelvis, I'd like to point out the fact that these two teams, despite, despite, the, uh, despite the struggle to try and control the Dr. Hauschka jam line, these girls are putting the roller in roller derby. Some of these packs have been at absolutely breakneck speeds. You know what, though? They, they bring the right flavor to derby. And speaking of flavor, get don't forget the Vanilla Derby. That's right, Vanilla Derby. They are a fine sponsor. That is Vanilla Skates. Riptide with the jam cap. Once again for Naptown being held up by a Philly three wall at the back of the pack. And to the surprise of nobody, I'm going to assume, she need a stretcher through the pack, lead jammer. She's just lightning. She's black and blue lightning, bruised lightning. Oh! An amazing skate work right there by Shanita Stretcher. Wow, absolutely amazing. Four more points on the board for Philly as she calls off the jam. You know, this at home isn't just for you. It is Derby for All. And Derby for All, a proud sponsor. Experienced Derby skaters getting you the right gear to take you to the next level. Goldie on the jam line for Philly. Blue Messiah returning to the jam line for Naptown. 
Fans, if you're just joining in, Naptown in their white uniforms with red trim, Philly in their black uniforms with red trim. Hey, boom, check it out. Lead jammer right there. It's Goldie. Number 87, she is doing what she can. Meanwhile, Teflon Donna giving it right there to Blue Messiah. A derelict's doing the same thing. Blue Messiah just taking a licking this jam. Goldie now looking for a way through. Dora the Destroyer saying, uh-uh, ain't gonna happen. And she's there with, seemed to be like her partner for Derby Life, Asian Sensation. Both of them trying to slow her down, but a five-point Grand Slam still comes out. Well, then Agent Sensation trying to play a little bit of offense for her jammer as Derelix has just been given Blue Messiah the bad end of the business. Now Persephone getting in on the game as well. Blue Messiah pushed to the inside of the front straightaway. And Blue Messiah definitely, she is, she is such a fighter. Still keeping on through as another Grand Slam goes out for Goldie. Persephone delivering on just an almost debilitating hit to Blue Messiah. Blue Messiah looking like she may hold up and try and play a little bit of jammer defense. Now, once again, Philly holding back the back again, knocking Blue Messiah down in the back of that pack. Meanwhile, Goldie having to go all the way back, recycled, coming her way through. What pack awareness. Right now you're seeing number 218, Asian Sensation. She's been so aware of where the jammer has been this entire time. She's been cycling up. She's been cycling back. It's been absolutely amazing. Blue Messiah has earned every ounce of my respect this bout. That girl just continues to keep getting up and now trying to play a little bit of jammer defense once again, throwing everything that she can at this jam. Oh, man. Three more points right up there on the board for Philly. Absolutely terrifying the way that they're going in there. One would say even Wicked, and don't forget that Wicked Skatewear, not only at every tournament, but able to be accessed on the interwebs. On the intertrons. Indeed. Mo Payne taking the jam cap once again for Philly. Made in America, lining up with the star for Naptown. And look at Mo Payne. She is just trying to jimmy her way through the back of that line. Oh my gosh, some absolutely amazing footwork right there by Made in America. She is your lead jammer. Made in America just coming out of nowhere like Charlton Heston on the Planet of the Apes. You bastard, you jammed it all to hell. I will admit I'm speechless after that. Made in America working way through on her scoring pass. Takes a huge hit going into turn one. Calls off the jam, but not before picking up four points for Naptown. Woo! Absolutely amazing. Our event partners here that we still want to thank. Don't forget, Flat Track Revolution, Iron Doll, the Bruce Boutique Shake Box. And now look up there from Derbyville. Check out that replay. Look at the way she comes around. Made in America just sliding around. And Pelvis, real quick, credit where credit is due. Excellent work by the outside pack refs, not calling a cut on that. Her skate definitely inside that line on the second straightaway. Excellent non-call right there by the referee crew, who have been fabulous this evening. Number 208, Amuse Boosh taking the jam cap for Naptown. Whoa, just boom. Right again, Persephone whose spirit animal for all of last year, and probably still, is the wolf, howling her way through a pack. Amuse Bouche looking for some jammer defense right there, walling up with her blockers. Pack coming to a standstill, Persephone. She just puts her hands on her hips, she's like, how's this gonna work? Checking it out. Wait for it, wait for it. Moose Boosh, meanwhile, knocked to the inside. Persephone now looking for her way. Wow. Knock, knock. She's still staying in. Persephone recycled to the back of the pack, attacking once again. A Moose Boosh clear on her initial pass. Persephone clear on a five point scoring pass. Grand slam. Woo! 
Those five points brought to you by Adam Wheels, the official wheel of the WFTDA. Would Adam Wheels bring you anything less than a Grand Slam, Pelvis Costello? No, they would not. And there we go. Look at that. Those five fingers still up. Staying alive. That's what we're doing in this jam. Persephone calls it off as a moves Bruce, ready to attack the pack. You know, I was wondering, you are you are you are a very well known derby announcer on the West Coast, and I was I was wondering you there's many things that there's very few things you don't know. But do you know how amazing roller rollergirlskates.com is? I have not been to rollergirlskates.com myself. Well, when we are done here, you do yourself a favor and you log on and you just check out exactly what they have. It is amazing maybe derby I, gear. Maybe I can find something for my beloved on their website. You should do it. Your anniversary is coming up. I checked your calendar. Booyah. Teflon Donna wearing the jam cap for Philly. Riptide taking the jam cap once again for Naptown. Teflon Donna tries to squeak through on that outside rail of the front straightaway, and she does. She is your lead jammer. <laughs> Donna or Donat. There is no try. Riptide now through the pack on her initial pass. Teflon Donna trying to cash in, get a few points. Wow, check out that speed. We're going to see what we got for a point. We got zero up there for Naptown and two for Teflon Donna. Teflon Donna on the screen, just looking up the scoreboard. Big old smiles right there. She's kind of like, oop. It's like, yeah, you did that, Urkel. Goldie returning to the jam line for Philly, taking on Dora the Destroyer. Dora the Destroyer being a phenomenal blocker throughout this entire game, and even this season. And here she is, up jamming for Naptown. But when you're looking, when it comes in terms of penalty minutes for some of the actual jammers too, it's an interesting idea. I mean, you have five minutes of penalty box time for Dora the Destroyer already. That's right, five box minutes served so far by Dora. Remember, seven box minutes, and you are out of the game. That's right. This is not something that they really want to risk right now, but... Look at Dora fight against the front of that pack coming into turns three and four. She was about halfway home and continues pushing at the front of that pack. Philly with a great two-wall in front, being bridged right there. Smart tactics by Philly. They are definitely masters of strategy. They've been trying a lot of things. I know that Teflon Donna had told me early on at Wild West Showdown that they were going to be trying out a lot of new strategies with their new blood on this season, and it's definitely being brought to bear here at WFTDA Championships. Indeed, Dora's still looking to get through on that initial pass. That's Derelix number 67 saying, you ain't getting through yet. I was just going to say she's done a great job of cycling back up to the front for Philly. Amazing. Goldie now attacking on her scoring pass, coming out of turn two. Check her out, Goldie just trying to get through that wall of white up in that front. Well, and Goldie knows, I mean, she's a smart enough player and she's been doing it all about long. If she can just push those ladies in front out 20 feet, she's gonna get a free and clear pass just like that. Five point Grand Slam That's for Goldie. Right. Goldie just being the maestro of that Grand Slam, bringing it out. Quickly around the pack, looking to engage on another scoring pass. Gets clear of the pack. Looks like there may have been a minor multiplayer block. And look at that. That's breakfast for two. Second Grand Slam for Goldie. Well, somebody actually went out for that. Caught you looking for that multiplayer block. Now we're checking it out here as the music takes a lull. You see Goldie, look at this replay right here. Door the Destroyer getting blocked. Boom, Goldie just weaves around in and out. Majestic with a great hit right there, right before the screen faded. We've got a Moose Bouche on the jam line for Naptown and Mo Payne taking the star for Philly. Whoa. Already getting folks being knocked down, but Mo Payne is in there. Moose Bush gets lead jammer for Naptown. Two minutes, 13 seconds left on the period clock. 
Amuz Bruce, the leading scorer for Naptown so far this evening. 28 points to her credit. Looking well, to attack the back of the pack and put on some more, Pelvis. Really, that is the best thing that you could do. Calling it off right now, bringing their score further up. That four more points bringing them up to 64 to 114. 50 points actually between these teams. While Philly has always been ahead, Naptown is not going down without a fight. A very pretty close game for a brand new team coming into this dance. Indeed, and Naptown should take away the fact that they have played some amazing defense holding, holding Philly to uh, 214 right there. Philly, two, num Philly, number two in the East. They're hanging with them. That's amazing. Exactly. Exactly. Made in America jamming once again for Naptown. She is through the pack, and she is your lead jammer. Wow. Another lead jammer status there. Gloria Grindham giving up about a quarter track to Made in America. Made in America looking to attack those Philly blockers. Willa Hoflinch skating up to help her out. Now you gotta think what is going on in the mind of Philly as they're doing this defense. You're seeing a little bit of a more moderately paced pack. I, I, you can already see probably in the looks on their faces they are aware that tomorrow afternoon they are gonna be facing Ole Rollers, the undefeated number one people in the, in the West. Indeed, and Pelvis, as, uh, as you have been witness to this season, as much as it looks like Philly is hitting hard out there right now, wait until tomorrow when you see the Ole Rollers. That should be an absolute amazing bout between these two teams full of hard hitting. It's definitely what, what you're going to see. It's a smash mouth team, the ladies from Philly. The East Coast, they like to rumble, as you can see with a five-point grand slam there. Well, and what more can you ask from Philly? Here we are now, entertain us, and they have done exactly that this bout. Made in America working her way through. Is she making it? She's still a little bit behind. We are watching. You know, you really got to hand it. One of the unsung heroes, Dara Licks, number 67 of Philly, has just really been slowing down and neutralizing players all throughout this game. Well, that's the thing in roller derby. You don't have to stop them. You only have to hold them back. Made in America finally finding an answer for a four-point pass. Whoa, and it looks like that that was it. Ladies, and you know what you are seeing at home, WFTDA.com viewer. You are seeing Naptown at 68, Philly Roller Girls at 225. That is the unofficial score currently. And actually, what it looks like the score, it's, uh, we are seeing, yeah, that's right, 225 to 68. Well, Pelvis, while we've got a minute here waiting for the official final, we've got Shanita Stretcher with 78 points in Philly's win this evening. Gloria Grindham following up with 40, and Mo Payne with 49. Amazing performances by those ladies. That's right, and what we have noticed here, it's like there was a little bit of a scoreboard hiccup when we were reporting it to you earlier, but it was like it seems so much further apart, not as close. It, in fact, it is 225, 268, constant multiple grand slams.